subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. Danny Houston. Down this Donnie Houston podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a real special guest in the house today, man. I'm talking about a legend. I'm talking about a freestyle king. I'm talking about <laughs> a, a, a founder of this culture. You know what I'm saying? A pioneer of this culture, man. I'm talking about a slab king, and we're going to talk about that later on. You know what I'm saying? But, he, you know, hey, man, can't nobody do it like him when you talk about them slabs. You know what I'm saying? When you talking about this culture, man. Like I say, one of the forefathers, man. And I ain't never shied away from saying my personal favorite rapper from Houston. You know what I'm Let's saying? Go. Don Key, Lil Kiki. What's going down, Thank man? you. It's an honor. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a minute. Thank mm-hmm. you for having me back. It's all love. Yeah, yeah. What's going so down, good. man? I'm good. I'm, I'm you, can, you, can pull that, you can pull that boy down, too, because it's oh, going to cover my face on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, okay, you we go. We good. Yeah, yeah. It's going to pick you up. I bet. We good. I'm straight right there. For sure. What's going down, man? I'm A. Man, um. Album out, you know? <sighs> Going crazy, come on now. Album out, going crazy, man. I um, I worked hard. I work different on this one than I usually do. Um, I'm usually into some. It, it's not no that we don't work hard, but I, I had a different mindset about it. Um, I just wanted to bring the best out of myself. I'm I'm used to getting to the money. I was like, man, I'm gonna get the money regardless. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna do that, and then we're gonna make some money. We're gonna travel. We're gonna do shows. What can I do different to just put that effort? And put that strength back into a push of making all the OGs feel good about going back to work and doing it the right way. So, man, um, when people ask me how I feel about the album, I'm, I'm I feel great about it because it was never about money; it was about effort, and it was about elevating. Man, when you get to this point, sometimes you never know if this the last one or if this the start of something new. So I had my mindset, and I don't know if this it or if I'm finna keep on going. Because when I say it, I don't have to do this no more. You know what I'm saying? Like I could do something else. But I love it. So, and the response came back great. Different meanings in the album, different singles, and everything kind of turned out how I thought. Yeah, and I mean, it's track one going crazy. Jack Freeman produced by the Justice League. How'd that even come together? Um, man, to be honest, like, um, I was into my regular bag of how I do it. Like, shout out Mr. Lee. That's my main producer. And me and him, we were just in, and I was like, you know what? Um, T. Ferris actually reached out to me and he was like, man, I got some tracks from the Justice League, but I hear you on it. And man, I want you, and man, one thing about it, man, I do give him his credit for, he've always kind of done that with me. Like Slab Holiday, um, She Love Her Gangster. These were songs where he called me and had ideas in his mind. Like it was me, Slab Holiday is my thing, but he called me one time, he was like, man, I want you to tell a story of the, the greatest day that you've seen with slabs. Hmm. And we did Slab Holiday. Then he was like, man, I want to do a record about these chicks, man, and how chicks love gang- She love her gangster. And that's how we kind of did stuff. So when he called me some months back, he was like, man, I got this track for the Justice League, and I want I want you to talk some of that, you know, some of that Rick Ross type of upscale type of talk. And I was like, let me hear it. So when I first heard it, the first thing I thought of was like, Man, I'm going to try Jack Freeman on here. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, I'm going to see. Because I, I look at him like some type of Anthony Hamilton. You know, he definitely, like, he's definitely our souls. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. I look at him like that. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted, I wanted him to have that whole look with it. You know, he lying to have on a sweater with the with the cut off sweater. Ain't no telling. You know what I'm saying? He got that real R&B vibe. So I sent it to him. And I was like, really, I was in a cross because I sent him that in the other track that he done on the album, Legend Talk. Okay, I had I both know. of them at the same time. And I was like, man, try this on this. You know, he, man. He did killed. you tell him to do verses or how did that happen with him doing verses? Nah, man, everybody did me like that on this album. I sent people <laughs> to get hooks, you know, to be, and they wanted in. You know what I'm saying? The, the hooks was coming back with verses. So... I didn't really tell him to put a verse on that. I just told him to put a hook. He just went to rolling. You hmm. know what I'm saying? And I wasn't going to stop him. You know, I was peeking in and checking what he was doing. I was, keep going, keep going. So, and man, we just started putting the album together like that. So, this particular album, man, I could do an album in a month. I could do it in a week. I could do it in a night. I've done ABA in a night. I've done Self Made 2, Self Made 3, two, three weeks. This particular album took me a year. Because, mm. man, it was taking songs a month to get done. 
Like the song with Jack Freeman, I was taking time. The song with Juicy J, it was taking time. The song with Crit and Toby and Bun, these were songs that were taking two and three months to put together. Getting the verse here, getting the beat, going back. Me and Bruce Bang, we done a lot of, me and Bruce Bang, we surgeons anyway. We cut and chop and mix and change everything around, so shout out to them. And it was just real important, man. I just got into a groove of, man, hold up, man. I got Juicy J. I got the Justice League. I got Mr. Lee already. I got June, James, the hit cartel, and it just started adding up. So when I seen that the production was turning to next level, I just started putting a better effort. And a lot of my fans, they on some, they on some, man, we wanted, it's just so lovely. We wish we'd had more key. I know, man, I did Self Made 3 kind of more all key key. You know what I'm saying? Not a lot of features. There was It was an album that I had in the pandemic. I was ready to close that series out. So when I done Legend, I wanted to get the Legends, people who was going to make legendary impacts on this, man. Come on, Bun and Devin and the whole screwed up click and Zero over here and Slim over there. It was a Texas soundtrack. Started off with the We From Texas. That was very, very big for me because... Um, the numbers was crazy on that when you put the video. Out. Big numbers. And I think the numbers were big because the the drive and the impact that I reached out for the people with. Because from the beginning, man, from Don't Mess With Texas, that's what it's been about for me. Repping Texas, man, giving Texas an opportunity. We love California, we love New York, and lately we love Georgia and we love Florida. But it used to mean so much to the fans and for us to stand up for our state. It used to mean something for Pat coming out of Kiki and Scarface and our whole state used to get us. So when I done Slim Thug, Zero, Lil Kiki, let's, Let's, t let's throw in Sauce Walker, put a little spice to it, and then let's go reach out to Longview and Tyler and Beaumont and, and, and Port Arthur and San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, and make them feel good about it. And, man, we done that, and they stood up, man, and the numbers were great. So I think that was a great pitch to start the album, man. I, I had fun. I, mm -hmm. I, I really had fun. I was excited mm -hmm. about That's why I kept pushing it back because I didn't just want to drop it on the fans. I wanted more content. I wanted great looks. So... It's been really great, man. Talk about that holding, man. Um, cause this this is this is where you shine. You know what I'm saying? This well, is, well, this well, is. <laughs> well. This is that 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 was crazy because um, same thing. Shout out to T. Ferris again because I reached out to him. I was like, call Juice for me, man. He had Juice on the phone in five minutes, hmm. and the thing about it was so crazy. Juice was so excited to be working. Man, I'm, what's up? What you want me to do? So I was like, man, send me a couple. Let me see what I'm going to do. I'm going to work with him. So he sent me two tracks. Shout out Al D, who was here the other day. So me and Al D, man, Al D heard the whole album before I even done it, man. I don't know how I let him do that. I never <laughs> let nobody do that. But I let Al D kind of, and I said, man, what you think about these Juicy J tracks? And it was him that said, I had this other one with a Pimp C sample in it that Juice really wanted me to do. He was like, man, that's so H time do that. Al D was the one that was like, Man, do the other one. Hmm. Man, the other one just sound crazy. So when I did it, I said, man, I'm gonna do me. I'm just gonna do some original Kiki. I ain't really had that element to the album yet. I had um the the um the song with me, Paul and Big Tony, but I hadn't really done Kiki yet as far as some calls and holding. So man, I done it. I sent it back to Juicy J. He was like, nah, I'm finna put a verse on that. Hmm. I don't want I sent it back to him just to get that. To check the record out. Do you like no, the song? No, you know, he he didn't have a little tag in there. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I want that. I want that on there. <laughs> so I sent it to him, said, man, put that on there. He was like, nah, I'm finna put a verse on here. He was like, man, that uh, that's it. I want that. Caught that's so it made me feel good that he wanted to be a part of a song that really meant something to me. That's my thing right there. You know what I'm saying? So and and that's how it ended up coming on second on the album because I'm real strategic about how I wanted to, how I arrange my albums, how songs come on, how it flow together. I'm real strategic on all of that. So out of the blue when I finished that song, it was probably the third to last song that I finished. I moved it in second because I wanted to come right out of that intro, right into me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's me. That's kind of more of what my thing. That's my lane. We're getting ready to shoot the video in about a month or so. And that's my thing, holy. Big yeah, song, yeah, big track on yeah, the record. Yeah, on the record. yeah, I like that one. Man, what was going on with J-Dog, man, when y'all was in there working on that record, man? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> listen. Put J-Dog lived his whole heart and soul on there, man. Listen, man, listen. J-Dog done everything that I wanted him to do. 
I wanted him to be J Dog. I wanted him that passion. See, man, that's that's what I'm saying about this album. It's so special to me because that Chuck and Trill song I had it about a year and a half. I had that song a year before he died, hmm. and I just kept remaking it. Mr. Lee done the track. I kept trying to figure it out, and it just snapped. Man, I'm finna put J Dog on here with me and Chuck. Cause that whole album, that's how I was putting it together. I'm finna put this person with this person. Man, I'm finna put Bun with Crit. And, and 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 Toby and I was like I'm gonna put J Dog with this Chucky Trill, so I had already kind of did my part Chucky Trill at, so I just let J Dog go there and do his thing, man. And listen, <laughs> was you were you in there when he was recording? Yes, <laughs> yes you got I to was. tell me when you got to because the first time I heard, it, I'm like, man, what J Dog going through? Hey, listen, man? Hey, this listen. Was, hey, this was rough. L listen, it was so funny because um, that nigga say <laughs> you know he real passionate. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, so the part on that where he said, where he says, uh, the preacher man told us to call you. And I called your ass. Listen, he scared shit out of us in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> he scared shit out of us in the studio. We all up. <laughs> nah, that's my guy, bro. I ain't so, never heard nobody listen, talk to God like, like that. <laughs> what? I was like, I told him right in there, don't you change nothing on that. Let him talk it out. Don't put no more hook on there or nothing. And man, listen, the streets been calling me. They love it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because he really him. He give, he, he, I tell people all the time, he my H-Town DMX. Hmm. You know, gangster, rough street, and and he his own man. Man, I I love J Dog. That's my guy. So I was I was re I really been trying to get him on some records for about two three records behind. I just hadn't been able to catch him, and he'll do anything for me. So to get him on Legend with the rest of the Legends, that was real big. Yeah, that was just so real. I mean, you hear that boy still breathing on there. I'm talking about <laughs> the we need help, nigga. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> nigga boy, meant that listen, shit, bro. He meant that shit. He meant it. You ain't got no choice but to feel that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got no choice. Talk about the Toby, uh, Toby Bun and Crit and all y'all. Um, because that was a different sound, you know what I mean? What I wanted to do was just be a little diverse on the album, be different, do something different. So I called Crit and I was like, man, well, Toby, me and Toby did a big record some months before that, Purple Rain. It was real big. Helped my career as far as being able to get on his platform and really do it. And it was a big story behind that because when he asked me to do that record, I done something for him and he was like, oh, that ain't, that's cool. I like it, but I want the other Kiki. Hmm. I'm like, the other Kiki? You know, so he showed me a picture of what he want, which was a picture of a Gangsta Grill song. It was like, I want that Kiki. So when I came back in and done the Purple Rain verse, man, he was so happy, he was so excited. We shot the video, he made me put on the purple suit. You know, that's another long story. Yeah, okay. Because I, I, I remember you told me, about, I, we talked about this before, but what, talk about the whole thing and what it took you to get into that. It took hell to get me in that purple suit. You know, I don't think nobody else could have got me in that purple suit. They couldn't have. And then he turned around and put us in a mint suit some months later. Toby the only one getting us to do shit like this. Here. So anyway, man, we done it. You know, I, I didn't want to wear the purple suit at first. It wasn't something I wanted to do. But yeah. but going in, you know Toby got his own thing. And you, you're you yeah, not yeah, thinking like he gonna, he gonna make me be but a part I, I, I had a conversation with his assistants and everything. I'm like, man, I really don't want to do that purple suit. I'm already some type of got this chocolate melon. I don't know if that's gonna work out with this purple on like this here. This one I'm kind of told. She kind of tells me, yeah, go ahead, do your own thing. You know you good. Man, as soon as I got that, they got that goddamn purple suit handed out, just like this. <laughs> so I was like, man, damn. The old Kiki wouldn't have wore that purple suit, but I'm trying to, you know, mature up. So I put it on, and I was so happy that I did, man, because it was great. It was a part. Now, I ain't put the white socks and the sandals on. But I did put the purple suit on. So, but the white socks and the sandals, that's more H time than, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, man, I got a different kind of swag. I'm on some. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, it, hey, if I had to do it all over again, I would. I love Toby, man. He great, man. He. Let me tell you what I did do. That was a very exciting performance. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, not exciting. I'm just like, he was so different. I was at awe at everything he do, man. He do everything. He finished to be doing some coordinating, do this, do this. So oh, I was, he was directing the video on the whole shit, nine. Shit, man. So his thing to me was, hey, when you ready, this ain't about money and that. Just when you ready, I'm gonna, I got, I'm gonna do a verse for you. So for me to have, I took down there a year for me to be able to come back a year later and get him on Legend, and I just felt like adding Bun beat it at it was a crit track, crit doing the hook, man. You know, don't get me wrong, just as big as I was thinking about how big the song was, I was thinking about some streaming shit too. Hmm. <laughs> I was like, this is gonna be a big streamer. You know, Lil Kiki Crit, 
you know, and Toby and Bun B. It's out of here. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I get the video out of that, which I should be able to, it's going to be great. So that's the big thing about this album. As far as the numbers, I wasn't worried about that. I knew it was going to do what it do. Having me excited about adding more content and doing it and was able to, I was glad to wake the city up and wake the OGs up and wake them gangsters up and let them know, man, we still liable to do this kind of work and get this type of impact instead of just going in the studio to do nothing. So that was my main goal. So it's, it's crazy. Yeah. What, you got a favorite record on the whole album? Having Things is my favorite record because I'm a soulful type of guy like that. That's my first Justice League track. And the only reason why it's my favorite, I don't love it my favorite. I love Legend Talk. I love Holding, But I love Having Things because... If you go back to my last three albums, whether it's Self Made, Self Made 2, whatever, my first song on my album is always big to me. I don't even, it gets not even in a groove till I get the tone settled, till I get Ghetto Love, till I get Legend Talk, till I get Having Things, until I get that particular song, I'm kind of still. When I find, when I get, when I had Having Things and I got done with Jack Freeman, I knew that was number one. I was, because hmm. it was, it's an intro song to me. I come right in rapping. My intro song, my first song, is very important to me in my albums. So once I had that, I could breathe easy. So I wouldn't say it's my favorite song, but it was my most important to me because I was in a. It's all about catching the people's attention and making them. And man, the world has been going crazy by Jack Freeman and that number one song. So when I felt that and I got the response that I needed from that, that let me know in my personal self that. I was good. Hmm. Man, you know, I, I was listening to the album. I'm like, man, Kiki been doing this. This is, talking about album-wise, 25 years. Like, this is 25th year. Have you ever sat and thought, and sat with that? Like, man, I've really been, this, well, you this, know this what? been me 25 years. Like, People tell me about, you know, when, I, when I've been explaining 25 years, man, for the last few weeks, what's been big to me about it is this. Man, it's... It's not, no matter how many millions that we we claim to sell, how many streams we've done, whatever, man, I just feel good about, I just always believed in the rap. Man, when these CDs were list CDs and I was doing 12 CDs at one year and it was the change in lanes or it was street stories or it was this and that and it wasn't getting that much attention, I never knew streaming was coming. I never knew any of this. I just kept believing in the rap. So for 25 years, man, that's how I feel when I'm making my new album and I'm getting ready to drop and I'm going to 85 South Show or I'm going to Donna Houston and these people doing this. It's more about, man, I just believed in the rap. I never gave up on the rap. I haven't had to do nothing else 25 years. I sent kids to college, bought houses, made investments, live like I want to live, and it's all been behind believing in the music. So this opportunity to go mess with Crits and Juicy J's and all these other artists, it all reflects back to, man, I just believed in that pen. I never gave up on it. It never was about if I sold 5,000, 10, 20, a million. I just kept believing, man, and that's what gave me the opportunity to still be able to, as far as brushing the skills up and the talent and all that, that that's that's over and over. This is all I do. I'm repetitive with it, so I'm going to get better as time. You know what I'm saying? It's what I really do, but having the... Uh, being able to still do it, man. I know so many people from before me and the same time as me that's not allowed the same opportunity to still flourish, still be relevant, still have opportunities for people. That's why I'm telling y'all, man, it's not about all the homage and everything that y'all pay. Man, I'm grateful and appreciative to be sitting on these platforms and people praising and calling me a legend and all that because I took the other. You know, I took the other things. You know, I took the derogatory statements and the ridicule and key ain't shit and it's over and S U C and what they gonna do. So to sit here today as a as a as a mogul, as a pioneer, as an ambassador, as a legend, I'm cool with it because I, I took all those other fifteen and twenty years of all the heat. Hmm. Man, what you what you think about because you know I had to pull it out. You know what I mean? I had to pull that boy out. When you see that young key right there. Where where were you at right there in life right there? Um, this a killer, no cap, right here. Like I say, all that. Mm. <laughs> this a killer, no cap. Cause let me tell you right here about this guy right here. He don't. It ain't about nothing to do with money. He just hungry. Mm. He just wanted. He just got the best ride. He just want a battle. He just want. I just want everything to rhyme with red, blue. Don't mess with Texas. Ain't nobody repping Texas. This is what I love. This is my biggest cap about this album. You see that? That's that. 
That's that Astro jersey. That's that Astro's hat. See, I'm throwing up that H and repping Texas when that wasn't what y'all were talking about doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, no, you were the first see, one I see, saw. See, you were the first see, one I saw. See, when this these H's and 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 this, then nobody want to do that. Man, I told everybody I was named my album. Don't mention Texas. They asked me for what? Hmm. Man, why you doing that? You know what I'm saying? Like because I just wanted. So when I see that, I just see the hunger in that kid, man. You know what I'm saying? It's 25 years later. That kid right there, he wasn't worried about mixing, mastering, the, the album cover, promotion, uh, Latoria, and the, and, the, and, the, and the publicist, Donnie Houston. All that kid right there want to do is rhyme with blue, red, slab, holding, coming down, thinking, just a trendsetter. So this the blueprint. And I don't care what nobody say, man. It's, 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 this album is the reasonable doubt of Texas. It's the blueprint, you know what I'm saying? And I just feel like that. I feel like this album, you know, Pat album too. Pat album came out after me. It came out in 98, so I think it's the trendsetter. But when you go to talking about uh, um, swangers and coming down and screens raining and ball fades and drinking and smoking and H-Town and H in Texas and this, that, and such and such, and know I'm talking about and all these different words of the culture, this is what gave you the legs to do that. And that's just the truth. Hmm. It ain't no knock to nobody else. So it's not about did it outsell this person? Did it outdo this? Was it bigger than this person? What this album did for the culture is no other album that did that. Hmm. Period. And you know, it's, it's a trip, man. Like, talking, because we didn't talk before off camera plenty of times. You know what I'm saying? And every time I get off the phone, I'm like, man, I just think survival. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, this whole point, even looking at this album cover, DJ Screw, featuring DJ Screw, featuring 3-2, you know, Fat Pat, you know what I'm saying? These people ain't here no more. Yeah. Man, a lot of times, um, how I'm going to say that, sometimes I used to suffer or I used to have a lot of weight on my shoulders or have to deal with a lot by being on the last one. The, the well what they would say sort of like the most important one left from that from, from the, founder, the original court yeah, yeah. from the original court that was a big responsibility people are always trying to say who was better who was this whatever what about being here and have to really carry that torch on and on and people always ask me what would pat pat would be a fool to people today because he's really musically entrenched and musically inclined but the whole thing is like i say and it's like i said in the beginning Look at all these years. These ain't been 25 years of pats on the back, 25 years of con congratulating, 25 years of support. It's been hell. It's been up. It's been down. It's been behind you. It's been so, yeah, being being here from one of those ones that really wrapped in 93, 94. I got screw tapes that say 94. Hey, man, it's 95. It's 96. You know, these are real, man. I just had a 20th anniversary for this album five years ago on 713 Day. Man, it's five years later. It's the 25th anniversary of this now, this year. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, it's 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 different when, when people go back and you have to still praise the people who came before me, man. It's important, man. Screw, pat all these people. But what about carrying that torch to keeping it of keeping it going, keeping that name, keeping it alive just as long as the screw tapes. I'm talking about from a rapping standpoint and getting deals and what about the SUC and the SUC is that man, people used to speak of us as, you know, like I tell Poker this all the time. I feel so much better now. Me and him used to have a conversation. I used to tell him, man, I don't like the all oh, part of screwed up click. Well, when they used to try to talk about us like, oh, like we the part that, for, for, from a sympathetic standpoint. So when I get to legend and I get these awards from Obama or I do this or I do that, it's about SUC and still being so we won't be looked at as a afterthought. So Pokey album and when this happened, this happened, that's still great for me because I know that we started 30 years ago for real, man. And it's not no lot of people that's still around here making no albums 30 years later. Hmm. What uh what what is there any moment in particular for making this album stands out the most? You like, man, this is where I had the best time making Don't Mess with Texas. Well, I would say um <laughs> one of the best times that Don't Mess with Texas is me going to the north side to perform uh <laughs> South Side. To perform <laughs> South Side at Chocolate Town. And uh, Chocolate Town was the biggest club on the north and um 
Yeah, we were scared as shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that uh, we talked a lot of shit, but we were scared. Of <laughs> and that was one of the biggest shows I ever done. So that really stood out, man. And how we came in, I done pimped the pen, and they was in that fifth ward, and they was going crazy now. And we did that South Side and rocked it. And people don't know, man, I sold more albums on the North Side and Don't Mess With Texas, and there was cassettes at the time, than the South Side. So hmm. it's a lot of history in that. So Don't Mess With Texas, every moment about it was great, man. I remember, you know, our booth was in the bathroom, you know, at Jam Down. You know, this was the old bathroom. The booth was in that. I remember writing these. I was already a hook fool. So KK never tell you, Mike D never tell you, and that's what I tell people all the time, all the way from DEA to right now. I was already son in hit the fade. That was you. Son that hit you. the fade. That was me. Heart of a hustler. That's my hook. That even with most singing. Yes, we are players in pimp suit. That you know, bouncing turn. All these different hooks. I was a hook guy. I was young, so, so, so at, by the time I got to Don't Mess With Texas, I always tell people that Don't Mess With Texas wasn't nothing but organized freestyle. We had got so good at freestyle, we had perfected it by the time we got through the DA and everything. So when I got to Don't Mess With Texas, it was just a bunch of organized freestyles, man. You know, raise up the, uh, blaze up the endo, light the chocolate tie, sitting on soft gray screens, falling out the sky. This is something I would have said in a freestyle, but I was able to organize it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what took the world by storm because a lot of people felt like, you know, I could have done Don't Mess With Texas Freestyle. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's the vibe I was already in. Me and Pat used to talk about it. But for that was, the, I think that was the biggest catch of Don't Mess With Texas in that time. When they heard it, they wasn't expecting songs and hooks and beats and hooks and bounce and turn and this, that. And, and I think that and that carried. And I just kept perfecting it. I kept perfecting it because we didn't come in writing. We came in freestyling. You know what I'm saying? And we had to take it from the freestyle and turn it to that. And there's a lot of people can't do both. Hmm. Man, it was a situation before this, because I mean, it, that was a, like a big, like, you know, world debut. This is Lil Kiki, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but you had the opportunity to what, be on One Day, right? With UGK? Were you supposed to be on that record? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Um, uh, man, we, we used to be in so much shit. They went to jail, I didn't. Um, uh, we at the store. So we getting ready to go leave to go um, record the song one day a year and Pimp C and and we at the store. We can you, wait before we leave, before we get to that. Can you tell me how Pimp even how were you even approached to like, hey man, I want you to come? No, no, they was in tune with us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like no, they was in tune with us. They was coming. They was in tune with Screw Screw How. That's it. Um, Pimp C saying he didn't see me at Screw How before. You know what I'm saying? So they was kind of in tune, and I always looked up to them from a standpoint of. They made me think I could do it. They had a real tape. See, back in the game, it wasn't about if you was rich or didn't. Man, they really had the tape. It's in the store. You can like go and sign wave and get it. That meant some shit to me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, right now we got a screw tape and it says screw eyes and all this, but they got pocket full of stones, all this shit in the store for real. So them, them even coming to get us to do some music. It wasn't even about, about no money or none of that. It was about, man, it's going to come out for real. Hmm. See, I was really into the, all that back then. Man, I'm going to get on the real tape. That's how I got on 3 in the morning and, and um, Pimp the Pen. Because I big screw every day till I got on that. He was working on that shit a year. I called him every day till I got to. Because I really was at 18 or 19 or 20 and want to be a rapper for real. You know what I'm saying? So when we got ready to do that song, one day they came i never forget, me and Hawk stayed together. So um, we was at our apartment. This little store was probably about, you know, down the block from the apartment. And this just real talk. I had a warrant for my arrest, as usual. <laughs> I'm up to some shit. I got a warrant. So they in the store getting sodas, getting, getting cigars. It's going to go down. down. It's going to go down. I'm pissing behind the building, right on the side <laughs> of it. We all out the car. When I come from around the building, they get handcuffed and, and it's going down. I politely turned my head right around and got old up out of there. Because this is what I do. I'm a runner. You know what I'm saying? So I caught the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? And man, listen, I ended up, that's two, That's one of the songs I missed, I'm sad about, and I miss Wanna Be a Baller too. But Wanna Be a Baller was a different reason though. Man, I'm so sad about that. That was you just on, you was just on your key shit. I just was feeling too good. That wasn't me. I'm blaming it on the, on the record company. <laughs> they did that. They talked about that shit. I 
want to kill their ass for that right now. You know what I'm saying? But that was I, I bounced back from both of them opportunities. Little Troy, my guy. Little Troy called us three, four times to do that. We feeling good. We ain't, man, we ain't hearing it. Man, that shit went platinum. I could have dived off the goddamn um, roof. But um, <laughs> the same thing with one day with here we're gone. I just ended up missing that for that reason. But, you know. Yeah, man, talk about uh because you know it, one of my boys and I, I want to say that you on this hook on that. I got my mind on my money and I gotta stay paid. That you singing that or somebody else? That's Faze singing that. Me and Faze was a dynamic duo. That's who made me think I can really sing. You know, me and Faze we do it on good part. That's, That's me I'm singing good on part. good part. Yeah, I thought that was you. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. That's me singing. I still got that in me too. I just. I don't pull it out as it but now nah, see, I don't have it in me no more because back when I was young, I had nuts. Man, I ain't care what it sound like. I'm saying this shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't do that. But no it was more. going though. So now you're more conscious but of like man. Faze was very instrumental to my career because he was able to get out these. I, I'm real hooky, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm still here today. I got 50, 60 albums, man, and they all raps and hooks. I don't really have no wrapped over beats. Everything I do is with hooks. That's why my catalog is so big. So when I got with FaZe, I was in that transition stage of remaking a lot of old jams. And I used to always rewrite them with these different kinds of hooks. Oh, FaZe can sing any of that who, shit. Who is FaZe? Who is that's, that? a, that's this guy. He was signed to Jam Down. He was like they R&B singer. That's him with me on Good Part. That's him on Liar. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. That's phase on that. That's phase on the song with Hershey Wood Hard the um um We Are Family. Hmm. All that that um I miss my boys. Oh man. Uh, um all of that. This boy got classics. Oh, he's a classic man. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, uh, the um what's the song we got with Be Legit with me and Archie? Uh, uh, uh it's your thing. That's phase. All them is fake. All of them, man. That get paid. Oh, that. Let me tell you that. Ooh, the side. Yeah, yeah, side. yeah. That's phase. Oh man, I wore him out. <laughs> oh, I wore him the fuck out. Yeah, you had that hey. boy to work, man. Oh, I put him to work. <laughs> he on every album seven, eight times. You know what I'm saying? Because he could. He he was uh, he was with the company, and he could bring the life. All them, man. He remind me of some Jack Freeman shit right now. Hmm. This was in the '90s though, so. Yeah, man, that was real big. All those songs right there, man, and they really counted for me. What helped me with those, it put me in song mode. Man, if you go to my catalog and pull up all these albums that I got, they all in song mode. Hmm. Yeah, everything. I don't really got no beats. Where I'm just, everything got a hook on it. Whether you like it or not, it got a hook on it, and that's what was able to, God bless me, you know, 20 years later, it's streaming, and I got 50 of them. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, talk about, uh, because, you know, Going to the Swisher House. We ain't, mm -hmm. we never talked about this, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. publicly, but just that whole transition and even just what you was going through. Because you blew my mind one day. We was chopping it up, and you was like, man, I had a whole other name for 10 years. Yeah, I had a situation, man, where um, I was wanted. A lot of people know. I could talk about it now. Let me see. Can I? Yeah. I'm out of the uh, – it's over. You know, I'm out of the statues of limitations. <laughs> I think. <laughs> nah, years, yeah, it's more, more than nah, seven I'm years, just playing. Yeah. I'm out of all that. Now, nah, I had a situation in my life, man, in 1996. I had a probation violation, went to court on it, and got eight years of TDC. But I had a lawyer who, he wrote up these receipts and these things for an appeal. I was out on an appeal bun. I got the eight years TDC. If you had 15 years or less back then, you can get an appeal bun. Stick them, KK them, all them. These was my people back then. They bummed me out, so I'm out. I got to go back to court on this appeal, and the lawyer that I'm using, he's kind of like the liaison for the company. So I'm going through a year. I'm going through it the court time and getting ready to come. Well, I don't go. Hmm. I decide I ain't going back no more. That's it, man. You know what I'm saying? I got this eight years. I'm on the run. Well, he gives me a receipt for $2,500. I paid him $2,500. The appeal is dispensed. Such so says it's wrote up. Well, he goes to jail for the same types of things that mm. he was doing, writing these receipts. Another friend of mine, he wrote them one. He went to jail. Long story short, I'm out here, though. I'm running. I ran for 10 years flat. Alias names. So the whole time during Platinum in the Ghetto, um... All that from 96 to 2006. Hmm. I had a warrant for my arrest. So I was out here taking care of my kids, my family doing it, and I was wanted. 
Man, I run into police officers right now. I just ran into a police officer. And so I had to move all the way out of my side of town. I had to move to the southwest. I had a different alias name. And I used to run into police officers that knew I had it. I mean, you know, you got a warrant, but I was a little kiki. And, man, I'll get in, man. I'll get, I'll get, you know, get kind of scared about it. I'll be in for months. I won't really be out. I'll only be coming out for certain things. So when T. Ferris tried to sign me, I actually had a situation where I was um, had got through with the draped up song with Bun B, and Lil J and Red Boy um, from Rap a Lot was going to offer me a situation in T Ferris. And a lot of people don't know this. At the time, man, J Street he gangster to me. I respect him like that. I had a warrant. I really didn't want to involve bring him that. in that. I really didn't want to involve him in that at the time. I didn't tell nobody. Not saying that I really wanted to do it to T. Ferris and them either, but at the time, I really didn't want to do it to Jay just out the blue on some street shit. So my thing was, I had a mind frame of, could I get my Pimp C on? I might be finna go to jail. Let me just get an album out. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let me get an album out. So T. Ferris, he kept trying to sign me. He kept coming to, um, to go to Switch House. I knew it was going to be... Controversial. Controversial. I knew it was going to be, but I was in a situation where, hey, man, I didn't have nobody on this side of town or nowhere that I was able to put that burden on. I wasn't prepared to do what I need to do, and it was a big burden in my life. So I ended up signing with T. Ferris and them under a whole different name. Hmm. They was booking me flights and everything. Under this name. Under this other name. So you name. ID'd up everything. I got an ID, contract, everything. I felt bad about it. So one day, I catch a case on the road. In the other name, uh, one Swisser, one square, where it was out of town and it was in a small country town. They had roll on print. They had roll on print. So they did the print. I told them my other name. I bonded out. Well, the prints came back. When the prints came back, I had to go to court out of town. They were confused. Who is Marcus Edwards? Who is this guy? This It's a big confusion. So what me and my attorney tried to do was set up a situation. I still didn't want to fix it. We tried to set up a situation <laughs> where I was just going to go to probation out of town every month for that mm. year, for that square, whatever I had. That's all they wanted to do. Well, they didn't want to do that because it was an out-of-town case. So what they did was transfer the probation here to Harris County. So my first day going to probation, I'm going. I already knew something crazy was going to happen because they were calling both names. Margaret Edwards, such and such, such, such. So I'm in here with my family, and we in here going. We we waiting, and they got me. They finally got me. This was like 2007. I had been running for 10 years, and to this day, man, I tell people all the time, G Dash came. The the fee for it, thanks to Ship Lewis, my lawyer, they charged me a hundred grand to get it fixed. I had mm. the only thing that saved my life was that receipt that I had. I had that receipt for. 10 years the judge remembered the case knew the guy the guy did time for those receipts man they ended up giving me shock probation g dash and t fast and swish out they put up fifty thousand up front for hmm. me to get out i paid the other fifty thousand i worked it out when i got off and this is very important because i tell people and people always think i didn't sign with swish house for money power wall was platinum mike jones was platinum they was at the top of their game i didn't get a quarter I didn't ask for a dollar, 50 cent, want nothing. All I wanted to do was get chunk of the deuce, get I'm a G. They put me back in the mix. That's why if you mm. go look at the break them off video, I'm not in it. He's actually in it, my son. Mm. I'm in jail. <laughs> you know so is. I, I'm in jail. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing, I had to do three months to beat the case. So I'm locked up in the break them off video. When I got out, I almost lost the deal with Universal that I had for such such. So when I got out, people don't know right now. It's nothing that G Dash can really do that bothers me. It's nothing because I'm from the streets. Because when I needed that fifty thousand dollars to get out of jail, he gave it. I don't care that I had ABA chunk of the dudes didn't get a dollar from him. People were man, you earned that, you deserved it. Now I was in there. He they wrote that check for fifty thousand dollars, and I paid the other fifty out, and that changed my life. So when I got out, is that is that what delayed the album? Because it was like it delayed like, the that, album. That's what was delayed. It delayed. Well, the album. We ended up doing Gangsta Grill and we ended up doing ABA. To tell the truth, the ABA took off big like the album. It had Chunk Up the Deuce on it. It was so huge. So right after the ABA, I got caught. Hmm. And I was locked up. I'm, you know, we taking some time. I'm about to lose the deal. 
And I ended up getting out, man. And I ended up getting in some more trouble. After 10 years of running, finally get my name back. I got it back. I'm back myself. I got my deal. But I still was the same person. I still was smoking, drinking, doing everything I do. I ended up catching another case in my studio. And that case is the case that changed my life. You know what I'm saying? That's when you said I ain't mess with the drink no more. That's when I let it. That was November of 2011. And um, they put me on pretrial. I had to take a... How much like, were they trying to give you at the time? They were trying to give me five to ninety nine. If I wouldn't, if I wouldn't have beat that case, I ended up beating that drink case. They came in, my studio had sodas and shit out the refrigerator. We beat it. What the judge told me, based on that shock probation that I had and I was going through, if you lose this case, I'm going to give you five ninety nine. I told you not to come back here no more. You shouldn't have been showing up in our courthouse after we just showed you. So that's kind of how it was. And I ended up beating it. I was on pretrial from November of 2011 to April 2012. And I never drunk drank again from that day. Not a sip, not an ounce, not a deuce, not a nothing, not a pour up, not a cup, not a nothing. And that was been 10, 12 years ago. And that changed my whole life. And from then, man, it's just like a light switch turned on. I just started doing albums and getting deals and making money and changed my life. Got my whole family back, got my houses, got everything back going back my way. So. That's not no knock to nobody on here. I ain't talk nobody out their cup. I ain't talk nobody out of doing nothing they want to do. I'm telling you how it changed my life and what it did to me and what transition that I had to do to get where yeah, it took 20, 30 pounds off of me, gave me the right looking face that I supposed to be a young cat. And man, I just got back to work. So a lot of people be seeing me so excited with these cars and turned up right now and getting this money. I missed 10 years of it. Hmm. I missed 10 years of really being, I missed 10 years of deal. I had deals with Koch, I lost them. You know, I missed 10 years of being able to do what I need to do. That's why in my 30s and in my 40s, I'm just going crazy. Because a, a lot of big time in my 20s, it was really just about coming outside, doing a show, getting back in. A lot of them tapes that y'all was seeing, like Changing Lanes and, and Birds Fly South and Street Stories, these were tapes that people were blessing my game with. We're giving you 20000 to do it. We're giving you 15000 to do it. All these tapes right there, I had a warrant hmm. the whole time. So... Ten years later, to beat that and be where I'm at now, and I'm real. I didn't tell God that I would never smoke again. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say that. But I told him, man, if I beat this case, if I do what I do, I never drank this syrup again. I never had nothing else to do with it again. And I kept my word with him. I ain't talking about I kept it a little bit, snuck, sneak, no relapsing, no nothing, not nothing. You can put 35 pints on the table. I don't want none of it. Hmm. Yeah, y'all sure. come from that, so that I mean, and I that, come from it. So yeah. that's the whole Swisher House story. A lot of people just think it was based on they own, and I want to go over there. Nah, they offered me a deal. I turned them down six months, didn't do it. But I came to the table that this is something I was gonna need to do. And I tell people all the time, I wouldn't turn in. I'm a G. I wouldn't give Chunk Up the Deuce back. I wouldn't give ABA back. I wouldn't give Gangster Grill back. I actually wouldn't give G Dash, T Fast, Power Wall, none of them. I learned a lot from Power Wall. Mm -hmm. Power Wall showed me so much about being respectful, being not missing planes, not missing shows, kissing all the babies, signing all the. You don't want to go do a show with Power Wall. If it's 5,000 people now, he finna 5, sign all 5,000. We've been trying to lead three hours. He still that so Paul taught me a lot. He always saying I'm his favorite rapper and I'm his this here. But he's one of my favorite artists that, man, when I went to jail and came home, when I got out, Paul was taking me to show splitting it. He was 10 hmm. and 15 and 20,000 at the time. He giving me sevens and eight, put me back on my feet, helped me pay my, um, my lawyer. And it's been history, and a lot of people got all these different. No, it's nothing. I have nothing with Switch House, no thing. I love them. If I had to do that deal again, I'd do it because they actually is a part of saving my life. So, yeah, it was a one-year deal, and after it, I was able to go be 713 and do what I need to do. But me and G-Dash, we tight to this thing like this here because when it was time to write that check, he did. Hmm. That's real. Man, like you say, you're, uh, you know, you're cutting up with them cars, man. You know, that boy stick hit me. You know, Sticky boy, my big brother. Yeah, the boy Steve say, "Hey man, DH man, uh, that key man, um, that key man, he's a slab king, man." I'm man, just, I'm gonna go and tell you, man. You know what I mean? He say the boy been holding consistently. You know what I mean? If it's the lax, if it's the the vet, if it's the Escalade, if it's the you know what I mean? And the slab is a is a very sensitive subject around here, man. I'm glad, man. I'm gonna try to. Go and be the best that I can do in this here. Listen. <laughs> no, nah, I'm serious. 
happen because, you know, man, this finna start some shit. Of course, you know, they want to. I respect and love all these people raised me. Man, you have people who question what I think I know about slab. Man, I'm from this life. I live this life. I'm around it. I study it. And they question me about it. Everybody just have different slab things that they think about it. I was raised and came from some... Stick is very important to me from the slab from different type of ways. I can remember, like I told you the other day, I wrecked one of Slick's slabs. <laughs> Man, this is so crazy. I wrecked the slab before. So... What he taught me in the slab game was just different thing, man. Detail, how to be clean, how to be neat. I remember, man, riding with him and saying, hey, man, I'm telling you, I'm finna give me some money. I'm gonna give me a LeSabre. He was like, why are you gonna do that? Hmm. I was like, what you mean? He was like, you deserve a lack. Hmm. You're a Cadillac type of guy. And all that always transitioned me. It wasn't about, it was about stop, think, take your time, you know, Go for the best. Do the best. Be the cleanest you can be. Man, my first time ever seeing Stick with him, them not lies he telling, man. He came to the corner and got me. You know what I'm saying? He went to screw house, heard me rapping on them tapes. He pulled up to the corner, letting the window down. Man, where's Lil' Kiki? Where is that? Man, my first time seeing Stick white on white, on fold, slant back. Man, this is a car that's looking 70, 80,000 to me. It's a luxury vehicle, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is way far out of right. I tell people stories all the time. Corey Blunt and all of them used to come down our street. <laughs> they used to be headed by Jones to pass by the school. And me and my partners, and we used to look at rocks in our hand and say, man, we ain't going to never get to that shit. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was looking impossible. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really from the neat part of the game. So when I say the Slab King, people misconstrue what I'm saying because I got the biggest voice other slab as far as because I rap about it. now when it comes to the microphone I'm slab king <laughs> it ain't nothing to talk about it. you know what I'm saying I am the slab king of the microphone but as far as in the streets people think when I praise blunt or I pray that I'm taking something from the rest of them man different people are slab kings for different reasons man I love Kondre I love Hillman I love Jonathan Coleman I love Stick IJ Poochie these are people that I watched in the slab but I didn't call Blunt, we wasn't calling Blunt the Slab King because he had the most cars at the time. It's, it's people who got just as many cars. From our culture and our time and in the screw tape era, Blunt was the, to, to me, was the show up day guy. Show up day is real important. When it was Kappa Beach, when it was uh, um, the Bio Classic, when it was Carol Saturday night, when it was driving down Martin Luther King, looking to the right at his grandma, at his, at his, at his mama yard, because something in there, I'm saying he was the king of show up day. It's a lot of times when we were, people were working on the white arrow, or they was working on the butter, or they was working on the foes. Man, it was time when Blunt had the dog and the bourbon and the Lexus, and we were just saying he was king. It wasn't that Lil' Rick wasn't holding. It ain't that Kondre and them across the track ain't holding. It's not that such and such. It was just that in our eras of the screw tape and drinking, 95, 96, coming out, Candy Red, Ike Shot, Blunt was the guy. Hmm. It don't mean he had more than Stick. It don't mean he had more than somebody in the clock. The clock, the most talked about slayer person from an influential, influential standpoint, Bloody, this, that was blunt. So when I started rapping as a kid, I was saying the Slab King. It meant no disrespect to the other Slab King. Hey, man, Shiny Poo didn't pick me up. Let me tell you something. Hillman, I keep saying that same name, was a monster with these yeah, cars. Yeah. Uh, um, like I say, and, and people are always, it, the people from the eras before me, they want to, I'm not from the era of submitting them. I know about them and raised on them, but I'm not from the era of seeing their cars. You know what I'm saying? It's no different than the kids and shit loving Sauce Walkers and all them right now, man. They don't know kids. Or even on basketball. You know, a lot of these young kids, they don't they Steph love Curry. LeBron. Yeah, they, yeah. they love LeBron. They love Steph Curry. They love whatever. So I'm not telling you, like, man, listen, the clock, as far as the South Side period, we have – Lots of niggas who the Slab Kings who have did what they want to do. Me, as far as Slab, I just feel like I'm consistent. I, I take my time. It's not about how many cars I have, if I got the most. It's about, man, when I take, when I come out, I'm coming out hard. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming out correct. I'm in detail. I'm real into shit. I take my time. I ain't, these same events that I'm telling you about, I'm never in the rush. 
it's a holiday when I come out. I ain't rushing to the the capper. I ain't rushing because somebody having a party. Whenever I'm done and I come out, so the slab is a sensitive subject. On top of, let's get this straight. The slab is a car. I'm don't knock the new young generation of what they saying. I'm down with y'all to the fullest. I'm saying when I came up, the slab wasn't a car. The slab was the concrete, the black top. He finna hold slab. He finna hurt the slab. That boy finna come slab. It was talking about riding and coming down. Martin Luther King culling the black top. It wasn't speaking on a particular car. Now, when it did switch over to the car, I'm with it. You know, when I'm talking, I'm talking about my slab and stuff too. But when I'm talking history, I'm just talking the history that I know about it. So, yeah, man, no no disrespect. I think all them slab kings, everybody that sits on, even from a Courtney. Courtney has beautiful cars. There's so many people that we can name that had great legendary slab thing. I just call Blunt the slab king of my era of me watching it. So, no disrespect to nobody. And, you know, man, me, as far as with me, with my cars, I'm gonna do what I do. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm gonna make it. And I'm you, gonna, you, you got to you got the red velvet right I'm, now. I'm gonna continue uh, what, to make it tough. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, what, what, you hey, know. That, that, hey, now the red velvet is one thing. That's my first muscle car. We not really a muscle car city, but you know what I'm saying? That car is very expensive. You gotta have a lot of time and a lot of that. It's a lot to go with that. So that's my first one. Now these, I got the lack on the way, and it's and I'm back for the, you know. But you, while y'all talking this shit, you I'm back for the down, boss, boss? Man, I'm back for the crown, man. Hmm. That's all I got to say, man. Oh, yeah. you know? and, it, and, and it's a few weeks down, and I'm back for the crown, for sure. So you pulling out in a few weeks? I wouldn't say a few. Look at him over there. Hey, <laughs> I wouldn't say. You know, hey, listen. These shop people ain't going to never let you be great. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wouldn't say a few. I'm probably about. You're going to make the summer, though. Oh, summer. Yeah. Definitely. Um, um, what this is? About March? To March right now. May. Hmm. May. May 1st. Make something like that, mate. Mate, so I'm trying to hurry up, me and Juicy J. I'm trying to get ready for the video. You know what I'm saying? So, man, that's gonna yeah. be tough. It's, it's gonna, gonna be tough. tough. Man, be. and this is appropriate to do this because on the stick episode, he was saying I had talked Pat into getting the, the Lincoln, but he was really talking about the seven dudes just to clear this up for anybody watching. Yeah. But the story behind the Lincoln, though, you know what I mean? Was uh that was originally Pat Lemons, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Man, I was talking to somebody about this the other day, man, and they were so shocked, like. That ain't Pat, Pat. Man, listen, man. You got to know Pat in the slab period and what he mean to it. What it Pat Pat got a lot of Pat got a lot to do with Blunt. And it was his mind kind of Yeah, yeah. he got yeah. a lot to do with Blunt will tell you that. You know, that's not nothing. This got nothing to do. So when people Pat what Pat is a guy like this. Pat then came and drove my slab before. You know, my duck. You kinda happy about it. You know, man, Pat won't. You line up, Pat line up, be, it used to be stuff. We used to laugh, stick all up. Man, you'll be in a situation where Pat in your car all day, you can't find him. He riding, he holding, <laughs> and you pass by the club, Pat it. He pass, he, he like, pass by you, shoot you to do. You know what I'm saying? That's Pat. But see, that's I'm bringing up that to say when Pat, it's no discrepancy about Pat and the Lincoln. That's Pat Lincoln. Pat Lemon won't Pat to have that Lincoln. Pat deserve it. It, it. Pat is more popular in that Lincoln probably than Pat Lemon. Hmm. So people be thinking like, I was like, no, nah, it's not nothing like Pat. No, nah, man, the seven deuce is Pat. Then came slab and it's the deuce and it's red. That's the, the Lincoln is a different story. Pat was, I want to say Pat was in the Lincoln when Pat Lemon died. It, just to be honest, Pat Lemon wants Fat Pat to have that Lincoln. Mm. That, that's what I'm saying. So it's not no description like it's fat pad and it was some type of handmade. It's none of that. And you know what I'm saying? It's 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 a it's a car for the culture. And for people out of town, man, if you don't really understand Pat and the slab and his mind thought and coming down, that's not gonna even resonate with that's you. not gonna resonate with mm. you. You gotta know him and how he feel about that slab and whatever. Man, look, man, Pat is crazy. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to talking about some very, very flamboyant, very, very outspoken, very, very, you know, cool Roski. It's Pat. You know what I'm saying? So Pat and that Lincoln, they cannot be separated. Got to pop the trunk for my homie Pat Lemon. That's the Lincoln that I'm talking about popping the trunk for. But Pat can't be excluded from that particular red Lincoln. No kind of way in the world. Yeah, yeah. Man, let me see. Let me see if I run through all my shit. What we got? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That much. Oh, you got the rodeo coming up. Man, listen. Huge. 
people playing games, I'm excited. Shit, I, I'm boots on, I'm John Dutton. Are you going to jump out there like that? I'm a crazy motherfucker. I'm boots on these niggas here. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> man, ain't and grandmas is calling me, man. This serious, not niggas. And everybody playing games too. Hey, kid, what y'all doing on the left? I'm just checking it. I ain't got a damn ticket. I'm letting you know that right there. Ain't going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, shout out to Bun. He made it happen. And, um, man, it's a great opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, because this, you know why this opportunity is so good? Because we going to the rodeo regardless. Hmm. We going to get these um, fun sure. cakes yeah. and, and yeah. these sauces on the stick, all this shit. We going anyway. And you talking about we finna get on that stage? <laughs> Man, after I do this, man, Southside just touched everything. <laughs> I tell you, after I rock these cowboys with Southside, <laughs> oh my God, I done touched everything after I do that. So, man, I'm excited about it. That's those opportunities that you get that, man, you know, it ain't about money, bro. It's not about money. I tell people all the time, you know, it ain't about what we finna do or what we finna get. But people didn't know, man, Mary J and all them, man, they done a Super Bowl for nothing. Hmm. Tap into that. Hmm. Because that opportunity is great. What's going to happen to you after that and all that, man? And I appreciate Bun, man. This is Bun. This is the second thing that he done for me in the last six months that I really appreciate it, man. Because um, we got a new podcast coming. Um, it's going to be real big. Hmm. Uh, me, Bun, and um, Aaron Foster, Kendrick Perkins. Hmm. Y'all doing like sports and all that? Yeah. yeah. I am athlete of Houston. Hmm. Oh, oh. It's going to be real big. That was a good episode. Yeah, it was good. That was our test run. And you know what I'm saying? We kind of yeah went into it as a test run, or, that, or the feedback was was we okay. we had already been structuring it, but as as the whole team with Aaron Foster with everybody, that plane ride that was our first. Me and Aaron Foster arguing from Houston all the way to Miami, <laughs> back from Miami. Back. <laughs> so me and him, we good. And um, no, that was our really our test run as a whole. Me, Bun, and um. I think Kendrick Perkins, we've had a meeting or something before, but that's how I really and We're getting to work on it, man. So I got the book on the way. So I'm bringing all that up to say that's what I got out of my album, out of Legend. I always want to elevate and make sure that this music is taking me to different things that I want to do. It's opening me up the platform. Man, people have been wanting me to do a, a podcast for 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 a year, over two years. I wouldn't do it because I didn't want to get into the, the guest booking Lights, camera, action. I didn't have time to be doing all that. Well, this I Am Athlete give me an opportunity. Just come be charismatic. Come be myself. Do what I need to do. The book is going to be crazy. The book is called Legend Talk. It's about two months out. It's finished. It's done. Hmm. I'm very excited about the book. It's a self-help book. It's all my Legend Talk shit in the morning, all combined in one. People from any walks of life, self-employed, um, corporate America, homeless, anybody can tap into this here. You can start at any chapter. I'm really excited. I gotta get that for the table, man. Yeah, it's gonna be table and audio. So that's what I got out of Legend, man. And I'm I'm just happy to be in a space to be able to flourish in my um in my OG, man. Because in my mind, I'm 20. In Hmm. my mind, you know. (laughs) But you know, so I'm just I'm happy, man. And that's what I really got out the album, man. The album doing great. Every platform, every streaming platform has tripled and doubled. Shout out to the fans, everybody that stood up. So I'm just gonna content it out. Drop these videos, continue. I got some other things going, man. I'm going to get into these artists a little bit. Man, let me tell you, people think, man, Key, why you don't mess with the I Hey, I'm looking. I just striking out. Hmm. Man, I want one. I ain't going. I like, where y'all at? Send me a killer. I'm looking for killers only. You know, I'm ready to get, I ain't trying to get you to be little Kiki. We can go get the biggest bag you want. Get a di- I want to do whatever. I love music. I want to stay in it. I just haven't been able to get what I need to get. I've striking out a couple times, and it ain't their fault. Sometimes, hmm. man, the matching up is not you know it's different and I, any artist that i've tried to work with and it didn't go i still bless the game hope that marcus clay one and one man that's my, my boy, guy yeah, yeah. we didn't get to finish what we need to do because maybe on my time and i wouldn't finish with everything i need to do so that's my guy i didn't hold him back stop him you know what i'm saying we did deals contracts everything i want him to go for i would never stop him i want to see him he like a nephew to me same thing with a cal wayne i've had and i'm bringing those names up for people that i've started with that i've tried and that I just didn't get it finished with as a CEO. You know what I'm saying? And um, I haven't gave up on that right there. I'm still going to keep on going. So I'm looking. I got situations, man, that I want to help people with. So from the book to the um, to the podcast and the album, I'm, I'm excited in my 
OG game in my OG days right yeah. now. Already, yeah. already, well, man, I'm looking forward to it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you coming through. You know Thank what I'm saying? It's always cool to chop it up with Thank you. You know what I mean? Thank you, man. I'm glad um, we was able to get some of that other stuff out there. So people be want to know some of that, man. And um, um, I'm just – the the biggest thing for me what I told you in the beginning is thank you man we, we I be want to let y'all know that we just as appreciative and grateful man you know what I'm saying like people think it's just that simple man man y'all let hey man what's up thank you hey man appreciate you thank you for having me because it's that serious man so Donnie Houston show you're doing great with your podcast man keep on going man you having some great gear you about the only one that me and Rico called and we tap it oh Rico he <laughs> Rico he, called the other day about it. <laughs> He fish this man is the, is the podcast tap in king. So, you know what I'm saying? He it really to be honest, he the one kind of turned me on to you in the beginning of doing so, man. Just keeping it going, keeping your grind going with it, man. Big salute to that. Thank you for having me. Nah, really, man. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. Well, hey, you some podcast, man. Don Key. Hey, man, we out here. Yeah. Thank you, bro, bro. Donnie Houston. Subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man.